Hey gang, um, this is a video called Request for Payload. Um, this used to be called Competition Rules. So this is a video about rules and requirements and constraints. And so what PJ is going to say in a minute is like, this is the boring video. This is not my fault, okay? The content of this video is not the most exciting stuff in the world. We'll do our best. Hits why he's doing it. Yeah. We'll do our best to make this video entertaining and um, somewhat exciting, somewhat watchable. But um, just bear with us. There's some stuff we got to talk about. And you need to know this stuff. You yes. need to know when things are due, what's due when, you know, all, well, it's the same thing in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's tired. I'm tired. It's late and not here. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need to know uh, when it's due, what's supposed to be in it, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's what this does. This is. Like Matt said, it's not exactly the most uh, entertaining yeah. video in the world, but it's stuff you got to do because it's a competition. Yeah. So let's be quite frank. And again, do it. and again, you're not going to be able to read this. Go to the downloads page on the Inspires website and download this presentation. It's Which also, page is it? It's also in your book. This is the the RFP, the request for payload, is in the very beginning of your Inspires notebook. And it's really bad because he wrote it. Yeah. It is, it's a Word doc. It's not exciting. Again, but you can follow along with that. I'm saying. So without further There's ado. There's a theme. Okay. So we're going to start with the scope of work. What do you got to do? What do you have to do to win? Um, what is your job, basically? What is your scope of work? So you guys, as, as we said in the intro video, and as we've said when we came to visit you, that um, you're designing an autonomous scientific payload that, that, that will ride aboard a UH designed spacecraft. So you guys are designing a payload. I said it better, didn't I? Oh, uh, yeah. See, an autonomous. You guys are designing a payload. An autonomous means it's going to act by itself at some point. You know, during the you know during its lifetime, it's going to have to do something by itself. And the scientific part means that it has to answer a science objective or a science question. You have to come up with that on your own. Um, and then for the UH design spacecraft, means that it's just going to be a that the spacecraft is what UH is doing for this you know this year in our senior design class. There's three main. Um, parts to this there's uh you have to come up with your science objective that's the first part um you guys have determined the purpose of the science objective of the payload the, the the second main point is that you understand the engineering design process we want you to do that that's the point of this we supposedly teach engineering design in college um and we're hoping to impart some of that to you guys this year this semester rather and um so learn the, understand the engineering design process and then your job is to communicate that. That's the third, the third one down here. You work on a team to communicate your ideas to uh, a review board, um, to several different review boards. Actually, there's going to be there's three main components that we'll talk about in a minute. But um, your job, so basically, your job is to determine your science objective, go through the engineering design process, and design something for that objective. And you also come up with community engagement activities um, during the semester that support the science behind this. And then you communicate everything to different review boards. Uh, does that make sense? Sounds good so far, right? That's your scope of work so far. Sure. It's going to make more sense. Um, part of the scope of work is that this project gives you different requirements and constraints. You've got different things imposed on you because of this mission. Um, number one, this is what uh, this is what we provide you guys. This is what we're going to give you guys. We give you guys certain things. The Europa Jupiter system mission shall provide you guys with five kilograms of mass, continuous power while you're on board the spacecraft. While you're on the spacecraft, before you are, you know, before you become aut autonomous, you guys can get power to power yourselves, to charge your batteries, do whatever you have to do, keep yourself warm, whatever. You guys get power while you're on board the spacecraft. Um, you have a volume that is 44 by 24 by 28 centimeters. He just leaves because for some reason. It's just the magic of cinema. Um, with the volume is about the size of a tin ream box of paper. Thank you, Vanna. And um, uh, we, we use that volume because there's probably 11 new billion of them at your school right now. How you know, many? 11 new billion. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a number. Look it up. Um, so uh, you guys have access to the spacecraft's uh, communication system. That means you can send the spacecraft data and the, and, and the spacecraft will send your data back to Earth for you. You don't have to send it back to Earth. The spacecraft sends it back to Earth. That's a big, that's a big distance. You guys just worry about sending your data. How much is it? It's a big, big distance. It's like 5 AU actually if you wanted to get technical. Um, so uh, <laughs> um, uh, 
Don't know where he's going with that, but yeah, I don't. And then anyway, but you guys only worry about sending your data that you collect with your autonomous uh, payload back to the spacecraft or the you know the, the orbiter or the lander. Um, and then while you're on board the spacecraft, while you guys are still stowed away inside the paper box, then um, you'll be kept warm and cozy. We'll, we'll, we will keep it nice for you, basically. Nice and toasty. Nice and toasty. It's nice and cozy. Um, what temperature is it going to be? It's going to be about 7 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, Inspire's team, that's you guys. What are your, what are your requirements and responsibilities? i got to burp, excuse me. Um, <laughs> Part of your payload, not your entire payload, part of your payload must deploy. Not the whole thing. The whole thing can. The whole thing can. Yeah, you just <laughs> kick the whole thing out. It doesn't matter. But part of your payload must deploy. At least part. At least part. Um, okay, at least part, yeah. At least part. I don't, it just sounds weird, at least part. Anyway, um, must deploy. So that means you can leave some stuff on the spacecraft. And some, if you want to. If you want to. And some, and, you don't and, have to. And stuff that is on the spacecraft can also measure things as well, okay? So, the, I mean, some people, if, you're, if you have something, if, if, you're, if, if you have a deployment mechanism that deploys a certain probe or something out, obviously that deployment mechanism is going to stay on board the spacecraft. Or you can have measurements being taken on board the spacecraft and have measurements being taken off somewhere else. But part of your payload has to deploy. Um, you have to survive the external environments. That's basically, uh, uh, where are we going? We're going to Europa. Uh, you have to survive Europa or Jupiter or the interstellar um, interplanetary space in between that you go to. You have to survive where you're going. Uh, when you're on board the spacecraft, again, you'll be kept at a, at a comfy 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But when you leave the spacecraft, it's going to get not so comfy, and you have to survive that. Um, no harm to the spacecraft, like PJ said in the in the intro video. No bangs, no booms. Those are bad. Okay. No terrorists. No terrorists. Don't go rogue. Da, 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 da. No, none of that. Um, so we, uh, it's frowned upon and it's rude. First of all, so uh, uh, you guys, we will judge and the um, and your your uh, your points of contact that you will get will also help you determine if you are going to be harmful to the spacecraft. You um, because you don't want to get to the end of the semester and have one of the judges say, you can't do that because you're going to hurt the spacecraft. That's a bad thing. So we'll help you out during the semester and so will your points of contact at EOH. Determine whether you're going to do harm to the spacecraft. Uh, does, uh, you have to document payload design and community engagement. You have, that's the most important thing. You can do the best design in the whole world. You can have an awesome design, but if you don't document it, you don't communicate it to people, then who cares? It doesn't really exist at that point. So. That's the most important part. We said it in the intro video. The communication is the most important part. You have to document your what what you've designed and, and, and your community engagement activities as well. Document those, uh, put those in on paper in reports, and you have to present those. You have to put them in presentations and talk to people about them. Or put them, on, put, them on. put them on posters as well, um, oh, okay. and talk to people about them. In that paper too? It's large paper, large format paper, in foam core. So, ha. Huh. <laughs> So the last uh, constraint that you I got have already. Wow. Yeah. Huh? I feel so awful. I know. Oh, huh? I got him to burn. Ooh. Burn. Go. Get some ointment. Um. So. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. So. Uh, Europa Jupiter system constraints. There's constraints because we're going to Europa and Jupiter. Basically, you don't have to. Don't pick somewhere else. Don't pick. You cannot. Well, I, I want to study Pluto. Huh, huh, huh. No, it's not going to work. We're not going. Because it's not a planet it's, anyway. No, huh? no. Huh? But this isn't. Neither is Europa. But I digress. You have to choose. You're gonna you're gonna do your science. This is a planet. It's and, a wanderer. It's a wanderer. Everything's a planet. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, you're going. Your science investigations have to occur at Europa, Jupiter, or the interplanetary space along our trajectory, that which is, is dumb. basically between Earth and Jupiter. It's a or, void. It's space. It's yeah, void. there's not much. Yeah, space is kind of empty. Um, Europa and Jupiter are fun. Yeah, Europa and Jupiter, there's lots of stuff going on, especially Europa. Well, Jupiter, too. Jupiter's got Hello, Jupiter. storms and big red eyes and Hurricanes stuff Hurricanes like that. that move backwards. What's yeah. the deal Ooh. with that? Like, you know, um, anyway. You will have three different, uh, sorry, two different elements to choose say, from. I just made one up. Um, yeah. You're going to have an element for us is a spacecraft. We say the word, PJ and I say spacecraft, and we mean a spacecraft. A, a spacecraft, but a spacecraft can be a lander or a spacecraft can be a probe, can be an orbiter, can be a satellite, whatever. A spacecraft is a general term for us. So you have two different spacecraft to choose from. There's an orbiter that's going to orbit around Europa. We'll give you more details on that later. 
and there's a lander that's going to land on Europa. And we'll give you more details on that later. <laughs> so I know, it's like, but this video is going to be long enough without the details. Trust me. So you have to choose orbiter or lander, or you can choose a combination of the two. You can, <gasps> oh my gosh, yes, you can choose orbiter and lander. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's the combination of the two. However, if you choose a combination of the two, it, PJ, if you choose a combination of the two, do you get more mass? Yes. No. <laughs> You don't. You don't. It's still five kilograms. Your mass is allocated per team. Your mass and your volume that he threw over there is allocated per team. It's not per uh, element. It's not per spacecraft. So if you want to put something on the orbiter and the lander, then you divide it up three kilograms, two kilograms, or something like that. The sum has to be five, okay? And do the math correctly. Yeah, yeah. do the math correctly. It and the volume, if you don't. the volume will we'll divide that up as well. But. Um, you want you, you don't get more mass and volume if you divide between the two uh, spacecraft. You only get the same. So to what? The same. You only get five in the box of paper. Okay. So there are, as we said in the in, in the other video in the intro video, there's three major components um, in this uh, competition. Competition. Thank you. <laughs> uh, competition components. There it is, right there on the chart. So we have. Um, in reverse order, the first thing you actually will submit is the uh, proposal. You're going to submit a proposal. Um, What's it called? It's called the Payload Concept Proposal. Or as we call it? The PCP. There you go. Yes. The Payload Concept Proposal. It is nine pages. One of those pages, you'll see it written as nine and eight pages. Basically, it's nine total, but your first page is a title page, okay? So there's eight pages of content. And um, it outlines everything. It, it does. There's parts of it that are dedicated for the CEA and parts of it that are dedicated for the design. Basically, it tells your whole story. Um, this is a scored thing that you that you win by. The open house poster session is a scored thing that you win by. Basically, you guys are going to create posters, and we'll talk more about those in a bit here too. But this is a poster. <laughs> And um, this shocker, is, this is a poster that uh, one I of the teams. I thought it was a flyer. You know, this is a, it's a, it's put it, wrap it up in your pocket. So this is a poster that one of the teams created last semester, and it was at their poster session. And so uh, there's certain requirements on your poster. They're written in the RFP. They're also written in the notebook. Um, so follow those requirements, or your poster won't get printed. And uh, but your, po but with the open house poster session, basically. You get an easel, a six-foot table, and um, that's it, really. <laughs> and, so and some judges that come around and talk to you. Um, so there's no power provided, nothing. Um, so we will uh, no glitter, no glitter, absolutely no glitter at Dare all. I, no glitter, glitter, seriously. We will. You're disqualified on the spot if we even think that you even touched glitter in the last three days. Yes. Um, so. Uh, that's the open house poster session, and more of that in a minute as, as well. The last thing, the big enchilada, this open house poster session actually occurs on the same day as the final review. But the final review is sort of the, it's, it's, it's the most points, it's 50%. Um, it's 50 points of the 100 points, so 50% of all the competition is dedicated for the final review. And it's where you present to a review board. Um, and we'll give the details of that in a minute as well. But you're going to present to a, it's going to be, one of the rooms is probably going to be the room we're in right now. Um, and you're going to present to a, a big, scary rah, review board, and you will wow them with your awesomeness. What so, is the board? Rah, 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 big, okay. scary, yeah. So um, the point allocations, I, I said there's three major components. The uh, CEA visitor numbers is worth, is worth 10 points. Um, that's a component as well, but it's a, it's, um, it, is, it is included in other parts of this as well. But, there's, but this is how the points add up, is the PCP, the proposal, is worth 20 points. 15 points is for the design, and five points are for the CEA. So inside of this proposal, there are certain points that are allocated for the design of the payload, and certain points that are allocated for the CEA activity. So how well you write about it in the, in the proposal is how, those, um, is how those points are scored. The open house poster session is also worth 20 points, but it's a 50-50 split. It's a, so 10 points toward the, uh, the technical, the design of the payload, and then 10 points for the CE activity because the open house poster session is sort of um, of the t of these two it's the it's, it's the one that's more geared towards CEA. Final review again the big enchilada worth 50 points. Uh, 40 points of that is toward the payload design, and 10 points of that is for the community engagement activity. How well you present that. Um, again, this is a presentation, uh, and you will present in a room just like this. You'll have a projector, not a plasma display. And um, you will 
but that's the the four to one ratio is the design to CEA ratio for that. And then your CEA visitor numbers, you get 10 points. So 10% of the uh, of the total score is just for the CEA visitor numbers. And the way you get all 10 points is you have, you get one point per 50 visitor surveys, okay? So you need 500 visitor surveys, not just 500 visitors, you need to get the surveys back from the 500 visitors. So 500 is what each team is shooting for to get the full 10 points. You can do it. We had teams do this in their sleep last semester. No problem. Yeah. So um, that's how the points stack up. So little little side note there is an option this this semester this whole year actually um, there's something called that's there, there's a there's a, a an idea out right now Europa is a really hot uh, place to study right now it's actually very cold but it's in the press it's in the news a lot because you know NASA thinks there could be life on it they recently just they've recently discovered these plumes on Europa there's uh, they recently discovered that a, an asteroid struck Europa and they think it left some some weird stuff on Europa as well. They want to go check that out too. So Europa asteroid is just a comet. Uh, they don't know either. They don't know which one. <laughs> they call it an asteroid slash comet. I don't know which is which. But there. So Europa is like they're just NASA is jonesing to go to Europa right now. So um, JPL, the Jet Propulsion Lab, has issued this call for ideas. JPL wants to use a CubeSat, which is what this thing is over here, a CubeSat. It's a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter cube. You can see it out here, it's next to a coffee cup. There's you know coffee cup for scale. Very small. JPL wants to use CubeSats at Europa, okay? There's a mission coming up called the Europa Clipper mission. And they want to, um, and it's gonna be a big spacecraft. And, and they want to load some CubeSats on this, on this large spacecraft and see what, and, and to have these things eject out at Europa and see what science these CubeSats can do. And so JPL is looking for ideas right now. So we're not telling you you have to do this, but if you want to use a CubeSat, and you have to study Europa, you can't study Saturn, but if you want to use a CubeSat to... Why would they study Saturn anyway? <laughs> You're right. Uh, can't study Saturn at all. It's Jupiter. I don't know. Why. Saturn. They're both big. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> You can't study Jupiter with the CubeSat, or Saturn for that matter. Um, but, uh, and uh, basically, if, if your team wants to use a CubeSat and you study Europa, then your proposal and your final review will get sent on. We're gonna send it to JPL, because they're looking for ideas. And, and they wanna see these ideas. So they're gonna say, send us your ideas. So we'll send on your information, your ideas to JPL, and uh, then they'll look at it and tell us what they think. Um, there's no extra points for this. It's not like you get a bonus point or anything or, or, or a few bonus, no, sorry. No extra points for this, it's purely optional. But the cool thing is, is that um, your, your stuff is gonna get sent to JPL. Um, that's, that's pretty cool, right? So uh, you might be asking, well, what is a CubeSat anyway? Well, it's a cube, it's a, it's a small cube, it's a satellite, okay? But if you wanna have you know, more information, CubeSat.org uh, is like the, where all the CubeSat stuff originates, or uh, well, Wikipedia. We use lots of CubeSat stuff because CubeSats are very, very small satellites, very low power. You know, they they special. You know, they're very small, and Inspire's payloads are typically small. So we use CubeSat equipment a lot in the notebook. You'll hear us refer to CubeSat stuff a lot. CubeSatShop.com is where we is where you can find lots of instruments and stuff like that. So we'll refer to CubeSats a lot simply because they're actually satellites that have flown in space, and there's equipment that is designed to to fit on these things, and they're small. And since it's small stuff, it works for Inspires too. Low power stuff works for Inspires too. So, um, but, so you, were, you will hear us refer to CubeSats a lot, but you don't have to use a CubeSat if you don't want to. It's purely optional, but we're just throwing this out there as an option. Yep. So, boom. Um, so, those are all the upfronts. That's the scope of work type stuff. What are you going to do? What is, you know, what is your job? So, general guidelines, format stuff. Voila, this is, this is where it gets even more boring, okay? If you, if you haven't fallen asleep yet, Grab get some, ready. Grab some Dr. Pepper. I'm going to, and um, yeah, get ready to fall asleep. So, format-wise, documents. All the documents need one-inch margins all around the page. Okay. Um, How many inches? One inch, and we'll measure it. Okay. We can look at. It. Actually, we can look at it and tell if it's not if it's less than an inch. We've done this so many times. So, because um, you're going to cheat and make yeah, it smaller. You're going to want to cheat at, at this this. You're going to have, you know, this eight page, eight, eight pages of content, this final proposal, you're going to want to put, you know, you're going to want 12 or 15 or 20 pages, right? 
And so you're going to want to edge those margins out. We're going to be able to, we, we will tell. And our, and our students, let me tell you something about engineers. And our, and, and our students are almost engineers. Engineers will do anything. They're very lazy. Engineers are extreme. I'm very lazy. We're both very lazy. Look, I mean, yeah. So engineers, we will do anything not to read a proposal, okay? And so we will take your proposal, and rather than read it, we'll pull out a ruler and measure the margins to see if, and, and we'll say, if it's not compliant, sorry, I don't have to read it. It's not compliant. So boom, it doesn't get any points because it doesn't have one inch margins. Or if the font is uh, 12, that's what we've been doing, 12. So, so if the font is smaller than 12 point font, we can look at it and tell. I know. So if the font is smaller than 12 point font, we'll, we'll tell, we'll be like, sorry, no points awarded because it was non-compliant, okay? So again, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a laziness thing. They'll do this because they're lazy. They would rather measure the margins on your page than read your report. So, But I also don't make the font too small. The reason why we do this is because you don't want someone struggling to read your yeah. report. Anything they have to struggle over is a dead thing, right. right? If they have to struggle to read it, over. They will not score it. They will give it low scores. So you don't want to do that. So 12-point font is kind of the standard, and Times New Roman is kind of the standard yeah. text that we use in this industry. Now Microsoft Word now, for some un reason unknown to every human alive, except for people who work at Microsoft. Bill Gates. Times New Roman is no longer the default font. So you have to change it from Calibri or whatever. Yeah. They, yeah. So, um, but yeah, PJ's right, absolutely. When, when someone picks up this proposal. I'm always right. Yeah, when someone picks up this proposal, you don't want them to go, ugh. You know, you don't want them to have a bad reaction. That's why the one inch margins are there too. Because if you, if you push out the text to the edge of the paper and to the top and bottom of the paper, you just pick it up and you don't want to read it. You're just like, ooh, this is terrible. You want someone to pick it up and go, ah, oh, I like this. This is pleasing to read. So you want that reaction. Because it would bleed, right? Yeah. Huh? The bleeding edge is crap. Yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Ble yeah. The, ble yeah. F full bleed. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, full sorry. bleed. Yeah. It's like, what is the bleeding edge is like fast and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the bleeding edge. <laughs> So if you have figures and captions and stuff, no smaller than eight point font. Presentations, slide numbers, very important. This is, this is just to save you guys, okay? Just trust us on this one. If you get to the final review and you don't have slide numbers, woo, someone's gonna say, can you turn to slide? Oh, I'm sorry, there's no slide numbers. And everyone just goes, it's like wah, wah. You know, everyone just gets embarrassed and your face gets red. And uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's a laugh track that actually happens too when, <laughs> when that happens. You know, so um, slide numbers are important so because they can say, hey, can you go back to slide seven or slide 10 or whatever? I want to ask you a question about that. But if there's no slide numbers, they will embarrass you on purpose. We've seen it happen. It's kind of funny in, a, in an awkward, funny way, you know, sadistic kind of way. But uh, Arial or Tahoma font, uh, this is done in Arial, I think, pretty much. Um, Arial and Tahoma, uh, this is Tahoma, whatever. Arial, Arial and, and Tahoma fonts. Are you? <laughs> they are they are what's called sans serif fonts. Times New Roman is a serif font. It's got like little bitty. If you look at Times New Roman, it's got like little bitty things that hang off the T. You know, there's like little bitty things that like like the bottom has a little bitty stand on the bottom, and there's little bitty things that hang off the sides of the T. Those are called serifs. Okay, and uh, that makes it when you're reading text on a page up to close to yourself. Those serifs make it easier for you to read. Your eye can recognize the letters better. However, when you're looking at a presentation, those serifs actually get in the way um, because the font is so large and you're not looking at as much font, you're looking at larger font but, but less of it. So it's easier to read sans serif font, fonts that don't have the little bitty stands and the little bitty, little bitty things on it. So this is getting into fontology here. <laughs> and, uh, so, or if you actually said it in French, sans. Sans, sans, yeah. Sans. Oh, comic song, yeah. <laughs> oui, oui. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, so that's why we're about font. So that's why we want you to use. It's just easier for the for the reviewers to read the the presentation if it's in if it's in Tahoma. Didn't there. you always want to know about sans yeah. serif and serif? Also, font. no small than sixteen point font on the page. You're going to want to squeeze more font on the page. Don't do it. Your review board, the average age is going to be like 55, 60. They're not young people. They, you know, they need they get the glasses and stuff and the glasses. Yeah, we got stories we could tell you that it's like one reviewer got. Well, to, to we'll remind, tell you later. remind us to tell you the story about the reviewer that got really mad. It's awesome because of the, he was like looking at the picture. Tell and, me the whole story then. There you no, go. So, so, tell the whole story. In white or light background. This is a white background on this. Really? On this? Yes, it is. I'm um, And the reason for this is because um, oftentimes in the rooms. 
you'll, we turn off the lights because you'll be using a projector, not a uh, LCD screen or a, or a plasma display. You'll be using a projector. So it's easier for them to see the slides if the background is white because this thing is actually emitting its own light right now. A, a, a projector is not backlit, so it's tougher to read a projector. So if you have a white background, it actually fills the room with more light. Um, so it's easier for them to read their notes in front of them and the slides. That's the reason behind that. Uh, submissions, if you're gonna submit anything to us, if you're turning anything in. If you are, when you do. Yeah, when you submit stuff to us. There's, there's, no lots, there's lots of stuff you're gonna submit to us. Inspires website, okay, inspires.org. There'll be a tab, there'll be a, a tab at the top. Click on uploads. Click on uploads. There'll be a form there. You fill in the form and you, there's a there's a button that says pick a file. You you click it and it opens up a dialog window. You go look for your the file on your hard drive and you pick that file, hit OK, then it sits there and it spins for a minute, and then you hit submit and you submit your file. Okay? It's really easy. There are issues sometimes. Um, sometimes schools don't allow uh, uploads from our website for some reason. Um, when you upload a file, when it's been uploaded successfully, uh, you will, so, so when you upload a file, the form requires your name, requires an email address, make sure you spell it properly please, requires the high school that you're, you know, that you're associated with, and a description of what you're uploading, okay? Uh, when you've uploaded it successfully, you will get an email sent to the email address that you entered in. Check the email address, please, and make sure that everything looks right in the, um, in the automatic email that you just received. Make sure that it looks like the file was uploaded properly. If there's no file in the, in the email that you just got sent, if there's no link to a file, then something went wrong. Do it over, okay? Um, there's also an email going to be sent to your teacher, so your teacher, he or she, should be able to see whether it was uploaded properly. But um, to make sure this happens. This is your responsibility, okay? Yes. I mean, we'll check them too, but it's your responsibility if it's not uploaded properly. We can't help it, okay? There's far too many uploads, far too many teams for us to track all of them, okay? This is your responsibility. Um, so, those are submissions. Now we're going to start talking about deliverables and presentations that will be happening through the semester. Um, the first of which that's going to happen around week eight during this, you know, you know, during the semester is. It does happen week eight. It does happen week eight. I know it's not about just just let them think I didn't know. I'm just trying to play cool. And uh, Are you cool? Yeah, I'm very cool. So uh, <laughs> I will start with straight face. The payload status review. It's uh, or we call it PSR. PSR. It happens on during week eight, right before the PSR. There's a th uh, there's a couple of things that you submit to us. Um, number one is the interface control document. The, the first thing. The, the, the PSR is associated with three different things. The, the ICD, the interface control document, the community engagement activity uh, plan, and the actual payload status uh, review presentation itself. So there's three things associated with the PSR. The first is the interface control document. It is interface control document. It is basically it's a document, it's a word file that describes, we, we, we talked about it in the introduction presentation, um, it describes the requirements. Basically, this thing is your team saying back to UAH, we understand our requirements. There's four major types of requirements, project, science, functional, and environmental. And there's a template for your, for, you, know, you know, for this as well. There's use, a template for everything. Use the template, um, follow the template. There's a templates page and a templates portion of the downloads page. Yeah, there's a downloads page and then look under templates and you'll find this template, okay? It'll be in Word. And it'll tell you, there's sections in the template, it'll tell you what to write in that section. Get rid of the text that's already in the template. Don't look stupid. Yeah, don't leave the text that's in the template. The text is written for you to know what to put in that section, okay? Yes. But um, write about the project requirements, write about the science requirements, the functional and the environmental requirements. This, basically the, the point of this document is for you to say, we understand our requirements and for UAH to go, yes, we agree you understand or no, you're not so much understanding right now. Um, and so that's what the point of this document is. So these requirements, right now you don't know a lot of them. The project ones you actually do, because they were just given to you in the scope of work. But the other, what the? Project. Oh, but the other mm -hmm. ones, it's like flipping through the slides right quick. The other ones you're going to get over the next few weeks. So don't freak out and go, oh, I don't know these yet. That's all right, that's good. As we get into this, you're gonna start understanding them week by week. So you just start filling out the template. Uh -huh. It's weird like that. So you don't have all this at the end to do. We're professionals. Yep. We do this. So uh, it's a document. There's no page limit on it, but don't go crazy, please. Yes. Um, 
Use the template, it's due September 26th, and it's signed by all the stakeholders. Stakeholders are not people that hold stakes. Uh, no word like T-bone or something. You know, okay. But uh, it's, it's, actually, it's A-K-E, not E-A-K. But um, stakeholders are people who have interest in this project. The PM for each team, um, we sign it, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, your teacher. The and chief the, engineer. And the chief engineer and the UAH POC. Program manager. The, the, yeah, the UAH program manager signs it. So um, basically, again, this document is to say we understand our requirements and then we agree that you understand it. The second thing, like I said, is the community engagement activity plan or SEEP as we like to call it. The SEEP. Um, it, this is for the CEA group. It outlines the plan for your CEA as the name would suggest. Talker. Um, so you're gonna define the activities you're gonna do, you're gonna define the locations where they're gonna be, how you're gonna publicize these activities, the expected attendance that you, that you expect, um, <laughs> <laughs> the expected accomplishments that you expect, yeah. <laughs> the supplies, and then your schedule, or your schedule. Um, so all this should be in the plan. Again, this and is- This needs to be really thought out. This shouldn't yeah. be just thrown together at the last minute. Because especially the schedule, we're gonna hold you to it. If you say you're going to conduct a CA event on November 6th, we better see it happen on November 6th. Yeah. Last year was our first year. There better year. be a reason why. Yeah. Last year. a good reason. <laughs> Last year was our first year for the CEA, act, um, for, for the community engagement activities and the events and stuff. And it was really cool, but what we saw, it could have been cooler. If the teams, so, so, um, some of the teams put too much on their teachers, we want to get rid of that. Some of the teams did it at the last minute, planned everything at the very last second. Some of the teams did an excellent job of planning everything out, saying, okay, we need to go buy these things, we need to do this and that and the other. And so those had some really great CEA events. Um, and so that's what we want to have every team have great CEA events. And that's mm -hmm. what, I know it seems like we're making this too boring, but a good plan will help you out a lot. It'll take, it'll, it'll, it'll make you feel better too, because it'll say, okay, we just follow this schedule, feel better. If, you, if we just follow the schedule, we'll get this stuff done. So again, it's a document, no page limit, but again, don't go crazy, please. Use the template, it's due, September, it's due September 26th. We can iterate on it, okay? It doesn't have to be completely done. We can iterate on it. We want to have as much as possible by September 26th. We don't expect you to just have like, you know, we're gonna do stuff. You know, we wanna have a lot of fidelity in this. We want a lot of details in this. We're gonna do stuff. <laughs> we're gonna do stuff and then mix some stuff together. And, <laughs> and uh, um, so we'll iterate on it if, 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 if we think that it's, that it's uh, incomplete. Okay. Um, Got it. PSR, the presentation itself, payload status review presentation, it's going to occur during week eight. Uh, no more than 10 minutes. So unlike every presentation you're ever going to see us do, it is no more than short 10 minutes. Short and quick and to the point. Short and quick and to the point. Ours are long and drawn out and have no point. Um, so there's 10 minutes for the presentation itself. Then there's 10 minutes for discussion, question, answer with the board. The board's going to be digital. It's going to be over uh, the intranet. I don't know if you all heard of the internet before, but it's not not going to be Skype. It's going to be on GoToMeeting. Hopefully, uh, we'll, we're, we're trying that out this year, this semester. And um, so you guys will present. You won't be presenting. You won't be on video. You won't be presenting your images. Your your presentation will be traveling all over the world, and your voices will be traveling all over the world as Scary, you present this it? stuff. Yes, and so. Um, that's how we're gonna do these presentations. And so you're gonna have reviewers at UAH, you'll have some in different parts of the country. So that's what GoToMeeting allows us to do. We don't work for GoToMeeting, by the way, we're just, anyway. And so uh, the content for this, your team name, slogan, and logo, that's from the CEA group. You gotta have all that, all your team identity stuff worked out. Science objective that you've chosen, the instruments that you've chosen, this is the design group. Functional, environmental, and project requirements. You should know all this stuff because you turned all these things in for the ICD that you submitted the, the week before or the Friday before. Um, alternative concepts developed with the pros and cons. So we'll, we're going to walk you through all this. Don't worry. I know this might seem overwhelming right now. But we're going to walk you through all this during the semester. So I'll, you know, you, you guys are going to come up with basically what's our problem? What is our uh, what's the problem we're going to solve? What's the um, science objective and then the way to solve it with the, with the alternative solution. So we, there's different ways to skin a cat essentially. And so the different ways you don't to skin solve, a cat, that's yeah, a bad idea. That's, I, cats are evil. So um, <laughs> skin as many cats as you want. And so, and then pros and cons. His dog can beat up by cats. I know, my dog can beat up by cats. I'm allergic to cats, that's why I hate cats. So, um, so you're going to come it up with... It also includes the CEA plan, yes. right? So I wasn't that, that far yet. <laughs> well, but, you so you're going to... What did you say? So you're gonna come up with your uh, 
science objective, and then different ways to to accomplish that objective. You know, at least two different ways. But with those two different ways, there's positives and negatives, and you're gonna you're gonna list those in this presentation. And then you're gonna concept of operations. We'll talk about that. What is your payload gonna do? And last, but certainly not least, is the CEA plan and status. What is your CEA? And you turn you just turn this in with the seat, right? The C, the CEA plan. What is your plan? What is the status? What is your schedule? That's going to occur at the end of this presentation. Uh, again, it's in, it's in week eight of the semester, or of our, not of the semester, but of the Inspires program. Uh, so that was the very first. That was week eight. Okay. The next, the the, the next del you know set of deliverables and presentations occurs about uh, six weeks later. Week fourteen. Yeah, six weeks later. Haha. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and that is the payload concept review (PCR). Okay. The payload concept review is just a presentation, okay? Nothing else associated with it, it's just a presentation. And um, so we want all, now the payload concept review is designed to be a dry run for the final review, okay? It's the same length, it has basically the same content as the final review, but it's gonna occur a few weeks before the final review. So, but it's still a dry run, okay? Why it's not called the final review? Yeah, so you should have like 80% of your stuff done by now, okay? And um, so we want everyone in the design group to present, okay? Just to at least get the practice out of it, you gotta present. Uh, no more than 20 minutes in length. So 20 minute presentation, total length, up to 20 minutes. Again, 10 minutes for questions from the review board. Uh, content wise, and we're gonna use, it's gonna be digital again with GoToMeeting, just like the last one. Content wise, it's basically what you did for the PSR plus some, okay? So PSR was all the way down to alternative concepts with pros and cons, right? Um, now we're going to add decision analysis. So you've got these alternatives. You've got these two. You got these two or three ideas. Which one's the best one, and why is it the best? That's decision analysis. Payload con concept operations. What does your final design have to do to accomplish its mission? What is it going to do? What's it going to experience? Stuff like that. Engineering analysis. That's the part that's awesome because it's the physics and the geeky stuff. You're going to go through that and you'll present that. Your final design. This is our final design. Oh, you know, angels and stuff are going to scream. You know, so. Uh, uh, compliance table, that's where you say, okay, you talked about your requirements up here, there's requirements up here, our compliance table is, okay, here's our requirements that we told you at the beginning of the presentation, here's our design, and here's how our design accomplishes and satisfies all those requirements. Put like little check boxes, that's what this is, a check box. Put a little is check box. Is your hand going check, crazy? Check, 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 yes. I, I have a seizure or something? Uh, yes, Tourette's. And, um, so, and then at the very end, you will have a... CEA, that's obvious probably, a CEA summary that um, you guys are going to give, because uh, by this point you should be done with all your, with pretty much all your CEAs, maybe one left or something, maybe a small one left, but your CEAs, you should have a lot of that, so you give a summary at the PCR. Again, it's in week 14. Anything to add? Nope. All right. Um, we're rolling through this. Okay, so nothing has been scored so far. I don't know if you've noticed this, but um, the PSR and the PCR, practice. But it's good practice. But there's no points that have been allocated so far. The very first points that but we things have, could have been graded by your teacher. Yes, no points does not mean no grades. There's always yes. grades. So um, the payload concept proposal, uh, PCP, the final your final proposal, the, the the big nine page, eight pages of content paper that you turn in, not not very big actually. Um, this is the first thing that gets a point value associated with it. At least that occurs in this presentation. Um, so uh, the PCP, again, no more than nine pages, which includes a title page. So eight pages of content with one page of title page. Title page needs to have your team name, number, team slogan, team logo, high school name, at a minimum, okay? You can put more stuff on there if you want to save space for the content, like you can put your, I don't know, uh, team member names and stuff, I don't know, stuff like that. Whatever you want to do. Title page. You don't ask for that. Hmm? There's a template. Use the template, okay? Just use the template. <laughs> uh, so content wise, it is uh, a lot like the PCR, the presentation content wise. It's a lot of the same content. It is the same content. It is the same content, <laughs> but it's in a Word document format. So you have to be able to write. Um, science objective, instruments that you chose to satisfy the objective, the requirements, functional, environmental project, um, alternative concepts with the pros and cons, the decision analysis, um, the payload con ops, how, you know, what's it doing, um, again, for some of these, 
pictures are better than text. And we'll talk about this during the semester as well. But you see some pictures to describe the text. You need pictures to describe the text. Yeah, you can never have a picture. It's a picture by itself. A picture work. by itself. Like, Here it is. Hello. You know, you need text to describe it. Because someone just goes, I don't see what I'm looking at. So um, engineering analysis, that's equations sometimes. Um, very few, you don't want to put many equations in your paper. Final design, compliance table, and CEA summary. Again, so it's the same content as the PCR, um, but this is in word format, uh, or this is in document format. It's difficult because when you present to somebody, except for when you're doing a video like this, when you present to somebody, you can present to them, and if they have a question, they'll be like, or they'll like they have gas or something, right? And so, um, <laughs> So, and you can say, well, obviously, okay. we didn't, obviously we didn't explain that very well, but when you write a document, you just gotta send it to somebody and hope they understand it. There's no feedback. When you're presenting this feedback, and then they can ask you questions about it at the end of it anyway. There's no feedback with this document. So that's why, spend a lot of time on this. This is worth 20 of the, of the 100 points. Spend a lot of time on this. Um, this is what makes or breaks the teams. I will be honest with you. This is where the teams win and lose, is this paper. Um, teams that to do awesome and everything else just completely mess this up and they end up losing. It's, it's really sad. And, and this is the hardest one because there's no feedback. It's the only one where it's not a conversation. There's no dialogue between you and the person evaluating. It's just a, here's the paper, read it and, and then evaluate it. So that's what makes it difficult. Use the template. It'll be online on the downloads page. Uh, oh, PCP submission date is Tuesday, November 25th. 2014. That's this. That's the day before Thanksgiving break. Essentially, it's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Now this is the biggie. That's why it's written in all caps and big and bold. If the proposal is not submitted by this date, basically 11:55 p.m. Central Standard Time on the 25th, before the 26th, um, your team is disqualified. And uh, seriously, we do not like. I, I don't like doing this. PJ kind of enjoys it. We 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 you. We had a team disqualified last fall. Yep. We disqualified four teams a few years ago. Yep. Um, we've done it before. We don't like doing it. PJ does a little bit. Um, we will do it. Basically, it's we have to do it because this is the first. We have to get these scores going. Okay. Um, and, and this is the way the real world works. Yeah. This is. There's no. I'm sorry. There's no like you know redo or something if you don't. Uh, if, no, my yeah. dog ate my proposal. No, no. I'm so sorry. No. Nope. You can submit it before this date if you're worried about the date. If you're out of school on this date, submit it before that. I don't care. You can submit it. I mean, you don't need to submit it from school. You can submit it from home on you know the interwebs and stuff, and uh, on the line. Put it out there on the line. And uh, <laughs> this is a movie anyway. Uh, so, but we will we will disqualify you. Sorry, just gonna give you a heads up on that. You'll be disqualified if you don't submit it on time, okay? Uh, open house poster session. Uh, it occurs, it's going to happen on the same day as the final review, December 12th, okay? 12-12, uh, boom, boom. Uh, December 12th. Yes, I got it. So, uh, it's gonna happen on the same day as the final review. It says 12, 13, 14. <gasps> okay, so. Uh, <laughs> If you do it at 9-10. Same day as the final review. What? 9-10. No. Not, not, not. What? 10-11. 10, 11, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's like 10, 15 at night. <laughs> I know. I'm tired. <laughs> so, um, open house poster session. So, it is, uh, it's 50-50 content-wise, 50-50 between CEA and um, your design, okay? So, uh, it is... The actual event is on December 12th, but you submit the poster. The poster you submit, you submit a PowerPoint document or a PowerPoint file or a publisher file or, or, a, or a PDF or a JPEG or something. You submit the poster weeks before that. Because we, we will print this poster, we'll put it on phone core, or we'll, we'll get it put on, we don't put it on phone core. Hobby Lobby does that for us. But we actually print these, PJ and I print these on the weekend and stuff. And, um, but you need to submit it. You know, there's a printer, printer that does. Whether the printer, we send it to a printer, the printer prints it. Yeah. And um, but it's important that we get these. I, I can't do colors that way. I thought that could. Yeah. Color. Just gonna take me forever. Yeah. And uh, so it's important that we get this stuff early um, or on time. Rather, there's a due date. It is. Uh, You're going to talk about it on the next page. Talk about right? the next page. Yeah. Fine. There's a due date that we're going to talk about in just a minute. I can't remember off the top of my head. November so, 21st. November 21st right. is the due date for the poster. Um, and keep talking about this slide though. Yeah, so the, the poster sessions at Shelby Center, which is this building we're in right now, which you saw in the, very, in the intro video. Um, 
the team provisions, what you guys get for the open house poster session is one easel to put your poster on. Uno. Uno isole. And uh, <laughs> anyway, a six foot table, a standard six foot folding table, right? No tablecloth, no tablecloths. You want to you, you bring a tablecloth, bring a tablecloth, but none provided by us. Um, and Wi-Fi, I mean Wi-Fi, uh, interwebs. We, we, we will provide you with internet access um, on the Wi-Fi. Uh, that's what Germans actually say, it's Wi-Fi. It's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> it occurs simultaneously with the final review. We can't, um, so you'll have your poster session. It's going to be from 9 in the morning to 11.30 in the uh, morning. Uh, <laughs> Not at 9. <laughs> from, 9 to, from 9 to 11.30. Um, so it's two hours, two and a half hours. And then at some point during that two and a half hours, you're going to leave, or a part of your team might Bye. leave, to go present for your final review. That's okay. The judges will know this. All the judges will know this. Your team will prepare for this. It's okay. We did this last semester. It works. There's just some there's just some jujitsu you have to do. People have to know stuff. And but it, you're a team. You can do this. Don't worry about it. So um, look at that. Ooh, poster. Open house poster. Oh my back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we're old. So 32 by 40 inches. Uh, whether it's portrait or landscape, we don't care. But 30, one dimension is 32, one dimension is 40, okay? The reason for this is that's a standard size of foam core at Hobby Lobby. Um, it's the biggest size without getting ridiculous, large and expensive. Um, printed by UAH, by yours truly. And uh, the content, we want your, hold up please. We want your team name. If your team is not named Pompeii, put your team name on there that makes your team name. The team logo, this is their logo. Where do you, we have this poster from last year. And, <laughs> Uh, the high school name, uh, there's their logo, is Muscle Shoals High School. Uh, payload Science Objective, Science Objective at the top here. Um, figure of the proposed payload, proposed payload, side view, front view, there's the proposed payload. Uh, scoot over this way a little bit, I think you're off camera. <laughs> um, number of CEA visitors, here's their CEA statistics down here. They described all their CEA stuff, that's their statistics. Um, and then CEA description and pictures, they've got pictures, these. Pictures, these, my, my, my own, this is a great poster. I like this poster a lot. It's very visually appeasing. It uses, and it's white background. Appeasing or appealing? Appealing, something, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a white background too, which means it uses less printer ink. But um, it's also bright. Uh, again, if it's, a, if it's, a, if, if. It's smart? It's, well, it's bright because it's white. Now, a lot of posters we get are, have a dark background or a black background because we're dealing with space topics. Um, but those posters, when you look at them, they look dark, okay? When, when you look at it on a computer screen or on a, or on, a, on a flat panel display or something, it doesn't look as dark as it really is because these things actually emit light. So it looks brighter than it really is. But then when it's printed, this is not emitting light, this is just reflecting light, okay? So darker posters look darker once they're printed, essentially. So be careful about posters that are too dark, okay? Didn't you want that optics lesson? Yes. So. <laughs> So that's why this this white poster is really nice because it's it's bright and it's a it you know it looks bright and people it looks happy. Is it bright? It's bright. It just kind of has that bright happy feel it's to weird. it. It's weird. It's bright. And How do you um, that? it's got it's got all the required stuff on it. And uh, that's it. Go to fly. So <laughs> open house table. All the items. Right, we call it OH. Yeah, the OH poster session table. It's a six foot table with no tablecloth. Um, all the items you bring must fit on the table, okay? Um, if you bring a laptop or a, or a computer screen or something, it's gotta fit on the table. Or if there's stuff that you bring that you, like if you wanna make something, you can put stuff under the table, but that's not stuff that you're gonna use when you are talking to judges. The stuff you use to talk to judges fits on the table, okay? Don't bring anything that's seven foot. Don't bring, right, too long. Yeah, don't bring anything too big, too heavy, or too weird. You know, like a, if it's like a weird, like if it's a column or something, it'll, it'll like knock the table over. That's what I mean by weird. <laughs> okay. No fish tanks with 50 you know, gallons of water. 50 gallons of water. No, 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 no. <laughs> that happened once. No marketing materials. Uh, the giveaways. The reason for this is that uh, the U.S. government is really starting to crack down on this from our perspective, but also the people that are your judges are going to be civil servants. And it's, it's awkward because they can, they're, Cracking down on what they can accept. Um, like if you if you hand them a pen or a cup, yeah, it's stupid. They can't, and they'll be like, I'm sorry, I can't take it. 
okay? And so this is just to save the awkwardness because they won't take it anyway, okay? Plus they just, they get tired because there's 15 or 16 of you. Yeah. And if each of you give them something, they got more crap than they can They're hold. They're walking around like this going, I feel like a pack animal. Yeah, yeah. they don't They're, like oh. it. They get very upset about so, it. So, um. Just don't do it. Yeah, just avoid it. You can have a flyer, that's okay. An informational type thing, that's okay. Something they can put in their clipboard, that's okay. But if you eat, but if each team gives them a cup and some a cup full of candy, they're walking around with all this, you know, candy. They're like, "What am I gonna? What am I diabetic?" I was, so uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, they're gonna be diabetic. So, um, and then power, you do not have the power. Okay. Nada. Nada. That was a He-Man joke. Um, uh -huh. So you do not. No power provided. Uh, we can't offer a power for this. You could bring a laptop. A battery will last two and a half hours. You're golden. Don't worry about it. Okay. But if you're gonna bring if it's a, charged. Yeah, if it's charged. But uh, external monitors probably won't work, but a laptop would be fine. So uh, these are some CEA. I mean, I mean we, we told you what the CEA was in the initial presentation. This is another, this is some, these are high school teams. This is actually a high school team that's in the that's in the competition this semester um, at a elementary school, Orange Play. Oh yeah. And uh, no one understood my code. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> So uh, look at them, all the kids are real happy. You got the big high school students. Again, you guys, when you go to a middle school, elementary school, you guys are rock stars, okay? Can't emphasize this enough. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, people are intimidated by it, but you guys are rock stars. Look at this one, we love this one. This one's also competing this fall again. This is one of our great pictures because I'm not sure that she realized what was gonna happen when she did this. <laughs> and um, the kids, like his face and her face, it's awesome. This kid behind me can't really see his face, but he's got like goggles on too, which is cool. And um, they all have goggles on. Yeah, I just can't see the goggles. I'm, it's late. And this is a this is a parents' night, and they're also competing. This is weird. Oh, they're competing this semester too. So this is a parents' night where you can't see them, but the students are presenting on a stage to the parents and to the uh, to the community as well. So all these are CEAs. However, one thing that is not shown in each of these pictures are the surveys. Each person. It doesn't matter if you have a million people at your CEAs, if they did not fill out surveys, then they don't count, okay? CEA surveys are only going to count. And look, there's lots of pictures about them, too. Yes, pictures are good. Pictures, that, that was my problem with this poster. Bigger pictures of the cute kids, okay? Cute kids doing science, gold mine, okay? Just not remember. ugly kids, no. cute kids. Uh, ugly kids, bleh, yeah, cute kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, open house poster session, this is from uh, this past spring. Here's the Pompeii poster again, actually. Kind of wow, isn't that weird? <laughs> and, uh, like we planned this. But something. you see that they have an easel with their poster, and then all their junk fits on their six foot folding table, right? Um, again, uh, you can't see it in this picture. The easel's kind of off to the side here with the poster, but all their stuff fits on their table. They've got like models that they're showing the board. This is a model of their payload. There's some sand. They're doing some sand. They're, I can't remember what they were doing. But uh, yeah, they were doing some sand. They were jiggling around stuff. Here's a, 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 a laptop. Core yeah, a core sample. Here's their laptop that is on their uh, six foot table. And there's their poster. They're talking to the reviewer right here. And again, stuff on the table, easel. That's all you get is a table and easel. Basically, that's what we're saying, okay? <laughs> and no glitter. If there's glitter within 100 feet of this building, everybody's disqualified. <laughs> so, Nobody gets anything. No, but no, no glitter. I'm tired of glitter. So the surveys. A CEA visitor did not visit if they did not fill out a survey. Basically, is what it amounts to. It doesn't matter. Um, visitors, anyone who is currently, anyone not currently participating in Inspires this semester, previous semesters or next semester is it's okay. This semester, if they're not participating in Inspires, other teams don't count either. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, if there's like four teams at your school, you can't all present to each other. It doesn't work. Okay. So it's not this semester. Okay. And then collect the surveys after each CEA conducted. Usually it's afterward, you can do it before, during, or whatever. Usually it's, it, just get the surveys, okay? And um, enter the data in a spreadsheet provided by Inspires. We were gonna look on the Dallas page for the spreadsheet, enter the data in the spreadsheet. We want the spreadsheet to be uploaded later. The spreadsheet must be submitted by December 8th. The team is disqualified from the competing in the open house poster session competition, okay? So on the upload form to upload your, your spreadsheet, it's gonna ask you some summary questions about the CEA data. So enter the summary information in the form and then click, j just like your standard upload form, click to upload, to, to choose the Excel spreadsheet, upload that file when you upload the summary information. This, this is the upload symbol that I use when I talk about uploading is this going up. So, um, all righty, almost there guys. Okay. Thank God. So final review, final review. Um, it's the final review that we have. Uh, 
FR for short. This is the Shelby Center. This building right here, I know you don't care, but probably this room as well. Um, At least one of you will be in this room. Yeah, one of you will be in here. So uh, each team gets up to 20 minutes to present just like the content wise, it's just like the payload concept review, the PCR. The payload concept review was the dry run for the final review. So content wise, it's the same content, okay? You just modified it after PCR. Yes, please, I can't emphasize this enough. So it's yeah, ten, uh, up to 20 minutes for presentation, 10 minutes for discussion with the board. Modify PCR briefing. Okay, on the title slide of your PCR, it says payload concept review, PCR, right? Change that slide. Change the title slide to where it says final review, okay? When it's time to come to the final review. When it's time to come to the final review, okay? We have teams, it just it looks, it doesn't look good when you, at the final review, because the judges realize it too, because they write on their score sheets sometimes that we, like little, like little notes that we read. If a team left payload concept review on their on their cover slide for, for, their, their final for the final review, it, the, the judges don't like it because it makes it makes the even if you changed all the content in there, it makes the judges think that and you just forgot to change that title slide. It makes the judges the, don't know that the judges don't know that, and it also sees PCR it makes them think you're sloppy basically. Yeah. And so they Lazy. don't want to, yeah they, yeah they don't want to see that. They want to see final review on that title slide. Okay, so the very first slide final review, not payload concept review. Okay. Submit the presentation by December 9th, that's a couple of days prior, 11, by 11.55 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, failure to submit is grounds for final review dismissal, so you can be disqualified from the final review, which basically means you'll lose, because it's 50% of everything. Um, all right, so final review, here's some pictures. Same team with the dirt, with the sand stuff. I thought that was a nice, nice thing. So yeah, they actually did, they actually used it. I put this picture in here. You can't see it, but look in the presentation. I put a couple of pictures in here where the teams have um, physical objects in their presentation, uh, in their final review presentation. This team actually has a balloon and a little PVC pipe with some sand and stuff. It's very helpful. You can do that in your presentation. You can have physical, you know, you can have a, a, a payload, a, your object that you present to the board. You, you can, uh, Give the board things to look at. It doesn't have to be just a PowerPoint, well, it's like a flat presentation. You can do things during the presentation to make your presentation more exciting, to make it tell a story better, okay? And to help explain what you're doing better. This team had a little bit small payload. They had a kind of a complicated concept of operations, and so they wanted to show how it would work, um, how their how their parachute would inflate and stuff, or how it would loft rather. And so they, they showed that with this, this uh, demonstration parachute. And during the presentation itself, it worked. The, uh, it was really neat, the t the, the, and the board liked it a lot. Uh, just more presentations down here. We're just gonna show you, I, I also wanted to show different room configurations. These, these are, judges are in lines. This is a big U shape. This is kind of a, a arc. arc shape. Uh, so different rooms have different setups depending on the geometry of the room itself, because um, the rooms are shaped funny. Uh, but you can bring stuff to the presentation to help tell your story. Okay, last slide. Almost there. Thank the Lord. Um, <laughs> so uh, these are the things that count in the competition. These are the, this is my William Shatner. These are the things that count. And, uh, so, uh, you know, y'all know who Shatner is? Um, so, uh, I'll figure it out. Yeah, later. Um, price line. So, uh, Open house poster session is worth 20 points. You're submitting a poster. That's what you're submitting to us. There's a presentation involved, but you're actually gonna submit the poster to us. The poster is submitted by November 21st, which is a Friday. The local community are the people who are gonna uh, be the judges. And this, this judging occurs on December 12th, okay? 12-12. The payload concept proposal, the PCP, worth 20 points. It's a document. You can submit it as a Word document or a PDF, whichever one you want. Submit by December 25th. It's evaluated Not December 25th. Sorry, <laughs> that's Christmas. November 25th. That's right before Thanksgiving. The Tuesday before Thanksgiving. My bad. My bad. Um, good catch. So it's evaluated by UAH students, and uh, <coughs> they're, they're, they're going to evaluate it over the next week, December 26th through the December. Gosh, November 26th through November. December 3rd. So I broke that thing. That's interesting. So oh my goodness. Uh, so the so, third thing is the CEA data. Yeah. Take over. It's worth 10 points. So, and what you're going to submit is the data itself. You're going to ex submit, <laughs> and I'm doing it, Excel file and the online summary that we talked about. He just talked about it a minute ago. It's submitted by December 8th. 
it's numerical, it's automatically calculated because it's you know every 50 visitor surveys. It's an equation. There's yeah, no, there's no judging. It's right. an equation. And we'll do that over the ninth and December. So you're going to know how many points. I mean, I, I, out of these 10 points, you'll know exactly how many points you're going to get. Okay. Yeah, there there's is no, no ifs, ands, or buts about this. There's one. no mystery about this 10 points. Yeah. Then the final review presentation, the big enchilada, right? 50 points. It's a presentation, so it's actually a briefing. It's submitted on December 9th. The we PowerPoint. Need a few days ahead of time, right? It's the review board that he's talked about a ton with you and you've shown you a bunch of pictures. And then it's actually going to happen on December 12th. So the first thing and the last thing happen on December 12th. I don't know why I did this in this order. He should have put those two it's together. Submission date. But that's all right. It's an order of submission date. The first, sure, we'll first being that. submitted is the poster. The second being submitted is the PCP. Third being submitted is the CEA data. The fourth being submitted is the last being submitted is the final review presentation. And look how bunched up these things are. Yes, everything happens at the end. Right. So all this stuff we're going to do between now and that end is just stuff to get you ready for this. But you better be building this stuff ahead of time because those last few weeks are going to be really, really tense and stressful if you don't. So that's why project managers and chief engineers, you're going to plan ahead uh -huh. and try to make sure all this stuff is done ahead of time. So you're just kind of coasting in at the last bit. That's but, the beautiful part. And as we've said, this presentation was the PCR, which happens well before all this. So the same content. Three so, weeks before. Yeah, three weeks before. So you're not, it's the same content. And the PSR is half of the PCR. So you're building this content throughout the semester. So it's not like you have to come up with a presentation the day before. Right. You've been making this presentation the entire semester. Yep. And this, you just didn't the, know it. The, yeah, the, the, yeah, the same with this with this PCP. You've been making it the entire semester. You just have to make sure everything, you know, put all the dot all the I's, cross all the T's, um, make sure everything looks good and fits properly, and then submit it. Make sure it's submitted properly as well. So. Right. All right. That's it, I think. Yep, that's it. Yay! And um, so this has been the what is this called? Request the, for payload. Request for payload presentation. Um, again, the, the RFP is in the front of your engineering design notebook. This presentation is online. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Let your teacher know, whatever. Um, thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Toodles. Bye.